Hello everyone. Uh, so this is the part one uh, video for chapter nine, so which is about the deflection of the beams. So this is the uh, overall content for the chapter nine. Uh, so for the whole uh, lecture notes, so I already uploaded in the column, and you can look at the at your column to check out the uh, PowerPoint version for this uh, lecture. So. Um, in this uh, video, so I will only uh, focusing on the deformation of a beam under transverse loading and also how to derive the equation of the elastic curve. And we will do two examples to illustrate the uh, idea of the equation of the elastic curve. Alright, so before we can uh, go into the equation of elastic curve, so we need to look at the deformation of a beam under the transverse loading. Previously, in SOM1, so you already learned about the relationship between the bending moment and the curvature of the pure bending. And this relationship is denoted by this equation here. 1 over rho is equal to the moment equation of uh, the beam at distance of x divided by uh, elastic uh, uh, elastic uh, modulus time the moment of inertia ei let's say we have a cantilever beam of a b in which is is subjected to a concentrated loading of p at the free end of this beam so to derive uh, the curvature equation so we can get the moment equation by cutting off this beam at the distance of x from the end and we can get this moment here and we can get the value of the moment here as m is equal to minus p x all right so then we can put this equation back into this uh, curvature equation in which we can get the value of 1 over rho is equal to minus Px over Ei. So when we put the concentrated loading at the free end here, so this beam will curve downward. Okay, so it will curve downward. And we can calculate the value of the curving. So uh, if we look at this end here, in which the x is equal to 0, so we will get our rho, 1 over rho is equal to minus p0 over ei. And our value of p rho a is equal to infinite. And when we reach at the very end of the uh, beam at x equal to l, so we will get the 1 over rho b is equal to minus p l over ei. So... Uh, the value of rho b over here is equal to um, pi over pl. Okay, and as it goes along the value of x, so we can see that the curvature is also moving linearly with x. So let's say uh, we have an overhanging beam of A, B, C, D uh, over here with a total distance of 9 meter, And this beam is subjected to a loading of 4 kN at 3 meter from uh, A. And also we have a 2 kN at the end of the beam. If we derive, if we solve uh, this uh, beam uh, for the reaction, so we know that we have a reaction of Ra over here due to the support and also Rc is over here. And we can solve this value easily and we can get the value of Ra is equal to 1 kN and Rc is equal to 5 kN. Then we can uh, draw the bending moment diagram for this beam uh, as shown here. Okay. So when we look at this curve here, so we know that the end of A and D, there is a zero uh, moment, uh, M is equal to zero, and also there is a moment, uh, zero is point E, which is four meter from the end of A. 
So how does this relate to the uh, curvature? So when the moment, okay, so when the moment is positive, as shown here, so we can see that the beam is curving uh, upward, and when the when the beam uh, when the moment is negative, as shown here, and the beam will be curving downward. And at the point where the moment is zero, so there are no curvature, so this point of A, E, and D is still at the original position, so which is at the neutral axis of this beam here. Alright, so we can get the maximum curvature when uh, which will occur when the moment magnitude is a maximum. So from this uh, moment diagram here, so we know this is the maximum uh, moment and the value of the maximum curvature will happen at this point here. But to get the value of this uh, deflection, okay, or we need to have an equation for the beam shape or what we call an elastic curve to determine the maximum deflection and slopes that is happen at that point. So how do can we get this equation for the elastic curve? So from your elementary calculus, there is a equation for the one over rho, so which is equal to the second derivative of y uh, function y, and also the uh, one plus the first derivative of the equation uh, dy, d, dy dx square uh, power of three over two. But before we can uh, further elaborate this equation, so I need to explain what is the deflection and what is the slope. So when we have a beam that is curved downward, so as such shown here at the distance of x here, all right. So we can get a point on the beam, and the distance, okay. So from this point to the original position over here is what we call a deflection okay? and it is denoted by the value of yx and also when we draw a tangent okay so at this point here so we can get the um, theta okay so which is describing the slope of the beam at point q okay so in order for us to get the value of yx and theta x, so we need to derive an elastic uh, curve equation. So come back to the uh, beam parameter here. So we know that the 1 over rho is equal to this equation here. But this point here is too negligible. Okay, So to be uh, considered as the slope will be very, very small. Okay, so it will become 1 plus 0. Okay, so in the end, so we will get 1 over rho is equal to d square y over dx square. And then we can put this equation, okay, so d square, uh, d square y over dx square is equal to the moment of mx over di. Alright. So we can further get the value of the uh, y and theta by integrating this equation here. Because we know that if we uh, integrate the value of uh, d, square d, d, d square y over dx square, so we will get the value of dx uh, which is equal to the theta slope. And if we integrate this further, so we will get the value of y. Okay. Alright, uh, so what does that mean is e, we will end up with this equation here. So EI uh, over MX, uh, 1 over rho is equal to MX over EI. And uh, the value of the MX, okay, so we can, uh, because EI is a constant, so we can bring this value to over here uh, to get this equation here. Alright. So we need to integrate, okay, so this value here in order for us to get the d square y over dx. So we can get ei theta is equal to ei dy dx is equal to the uh, integration of the mx equation dx plus a constant c1. 
And if we integrate this uh, once again, so we will get the value of EIY, which is the double integration of MX dx plus C1x plus C2. The, and this uh, point here, okay, so this equation here is what we call an equation of elastic curve. So based on the double integration method that we did just now, so we will end up with this equation here. So EIY is equal to double integration of the moment equation x dx plus C1x plus C2. That means so we have two constants that we need to worry about and in order for us to solve these two constants, so we need a boundary condition. So we can get the boundary condition which is differs from case to case. So uh, in uh, this chapter, so we usually focusing on three different type of beam. The first one, okay, so which is a simply supported beam, which is denoted by the support at both end of this uh, beam. Okay, so if we have a both support at both end, so this is a simply supported beam, and the boundary condition for this beam is y a is equal to zero. That means if we put a loading on this beam, so the y doesn't change at this point here, and another boundary condition is y b is equal to zero. So basically, at any support, so if we put a loading, so there is no deflection at the support. So the second case, if, if we have an overhanging beam, so overhanging beam usually is uh, denoted by a beam with support uh, and the free end at the end of the beam. So as, uh, as the simply supported beam just now, so we know that the beam, uh, the de deflection at the beam, okay, beam support, is zero. So that means in this case here, ya is equal to zero and yb is equal to zero. In another example, uh, another cases is the cantilever beam. So in which the ya is equal to zero, okay, at end of the beam, and also the slope is equal to zero. So in all the cases, so we have two boundary conditions. So by using these two boundary conditions, so we can solve for the C1 and C2. Example in which we use the elastic curve equation to find uh, the deflection and slope at A of a cantilever beam as shown here. So as I have shown um, earlier, so we can get the value of the moment, okay, so in order for us to get the elastic of equation curve, so we need to derive the moment equation here. So the value of this moment here, it at point of x, okay, so we will get uh, m is equal to minus px. And we can put this equation here into the uh, elastic curve equation. So we know that the ey d square over dx square, okay, so is equal to mx, okay, so which is minus px. And we need to integrate this one to get the value of the slope. So ei uh, d square y over dx square is equal, to, uh, first integration is equal to ei theta, okay. So this is, it can get px square over 2 plus c1 and then we integrate this value once again so we can get ei double integration of d square y over dx square is equal to ei y is equal to the minus p x cube over 6 plus c1 x plus c2 so from this equation, so we have two constant, okay, so two unknown, okay, so that, then we need uh, the boundary condition in order for us to solve for this condition. So for the cantilever beam, as I have shown uh, previously, so we know that at this wall here, so the boundary condition of y is and slope is zero, so at x is equal to L, 
So for the first boundary condition, so we know that the uh, y is equal to 0. And the second boundary condition is x equal to L, theta is equal to 0. Okay, so let's try to solve for this equation. So, uh, so this is the equation 1 and this is equation 2. So in 1, okay, so in 1, so let's use the boundary condition of x equal to L, theta is equal to 0. Okay, so from this equation, so we know that EI 0 is equal to minus PL square over 2 plus C1. Okay, so the value of our C1 is equal to PL square over 2. So in the second equation, so in 2, so we can put the boundary condition of x equal to L, y equal to 0. So we know that EI 0 is equal to minus PL cube over 6 plus C1x, so which is um, PL square over 2 time L, okay, plus C2, alright, so uh, we can get the value of C2 as uh, minus PL cube over 3. So once we have this value of C1 and C2, so we can put back into the equation of EIY, so the final uh, elastic curve for our beam just now is equal to minus Px cube over 6 plus C1, so which is Pl square over um, 2x plus C2, so which is the value here, minus Pl uh, cube over 3. Okay, so this is our final uh, value of our elastic curve. Okay, so this is our elastic curve equation for the beam that is shown in the question. And we can further find the value of y at A. So at A, uh, x is equal to 0. So we can put the value of uh, EIY and then we can get the value of Y. Okay, so Y is equal to EIY. Okay, so it's equal to PX0. So this, this term will be 0 and then this also will be 0. So we get the value of EIY as minus PL cube over 3. Okay. And also to get the EI theta, EI theta, so we can put all the equation just now, uh, the value just now, uh, so we will get the uh, value of theta, EI theta, as PL square over 2. Alright, so this is the answer for this example here. So you will get your elastic curve equation and you will get the value of the y as uh, deflection. Okay, so deflection as minus PL cube over 3 EI and the slope y at A and the slope at A is equal to PL square over 2 EI. Okay, so I hope my explanation on the example uh, is clear. And in your lecture notes in Kalam, so there will be more examples. So please take a look at the uh, slide uh, and get back to me if you have any problem. Alright, so this is the end for the part 1. So I will show you the part 2 later. Thank you.